American voters know exactly who to trust when it comes to crime. It's not even a close contest. Republicans smoke Democrats with a monster 22-point advantage among registered voters when it comes to who would do a better job handling the surge in violence. And 67% of voters rank crime as one of the top issues this midterm election. But it's no wonder voters are worried. A shocking video out of Philadelphia this past weekend shows dozens of teens just storming a local Wawa and completely ransacking the place. Crime's gotten so bad in New Orleans that the police department there is forced to recruit civilians to make up for the severe staffing shortage. And get this, the career criminal who was once the poster boy for New York City's careless bail reform just surrendered to police on an attempted murder warrant. Judge, I feel like this happens a lot <laughs> when, like, the poster boy from some Democrat issue ends up going down hard in a scandal. You know what? It, it, you, have to, you have to ask yourself... Why are we in this situation? Why did people who knew nothing about crime or law enforcement or anything decide that we're going to do this social justice thing? And why are we as Americans paying taxes, tolerating this kind of, of criminal behavior where there are no consequences? Our legal system is now so consumed with the rights of the criminal that we give the criminal top billing. It's the criminal justice system. It's not the victim's justice system. And I've said this before, the victim who never chose to be a part of it. And we coddle criminals in this new social justice milieu as if they're the violated as opposed to the violators. And then we, we deny the trauma of the victims. Now, that's all fine and dandy, right? Here's the bottom line. You've got to reform the bail laws. You've got to put judges and DAs in office who know what they're doing. Stop with this social justice nonsense or you're going to suffer crime because crime doesn't just destroy your life or your family's life. It destroys neighborhoods and cities and businesses, and it's destroying America. If we looked at what went on in, in the U.K. during the Queen's burial and that whole thing for 12 days, we didn't see people hating each other. We didn't see signs and protests. There was unity. There is no unity in America. And the Democrats have brought us this, this divide where, you know, they're all out there. We're on the side of the criminal and we're going to give bail to the criminals and we're paying the price. It's about time we got them out of office. Have you ever been to a Wawa? Yes. You know it's a religious institution in Philadelphia. A lot of people are thinking we should give these teens the electric chair because of what they did to the soft pretzels <laughs> and all of the goodies in that Wawa. A lot Wawa. of people are saying. Do you understand the feeling of the people of Philadelphia when something like this happens? Not about the electric chair and the pretzels, um, but I spent a lot of time in Wawa's. I went to college on the main line, so I spent a lot of time in Philly and the surrounding area. Mm -hmm. Oh, the main line? Did you hang out in, uh, what is it called, Manny Yunk? <laughs> I have been to Manny Yunk, yes. Um, I understand that people are upset about this. I, I grew up here in the city, and yeah. I, I find it devastating what's going on. I've talked about not feeling safe to bring my daughter on the subway with me, which is a big difference. My mom had me in the subway every day. There oh, was always I thought your mom delivered you I in the subway. <laughs> my mom had me in the subway <laughs> every day. I would not have held out on that story for this long <laughs> if that was the case, but there was always someone around to help with the stroller, right? It was completely civilized, and obviously it's not the case anymore. In terms of the effectiveness of these attacks, it's featuring in the John Fetterman race. Mandela Barnes, who's running against Ron Johnson in Wisconsin, was just hit by a bunch of ads talking about cashless bail. Um, you know, our, these dangerous liberal policies. We've yet to see if it's going to be effective in terms of what happens in the midterms, because I think that Republicans haven't been necessarily able to close the loop to say we are for some reforms. We believe in social justice reform, but we think X, Y, and Z. Social, more social justice what reform? Social what is that? What is social? Somebody tell me. What is it? Well, it's making sure that people aren't incarcerated for crimes that they shouldn't be. This That's is what, what the criminal justice system is, That's to right. decide who's guilty and who's not guilty. Well, you would agree, I think, that there have been laws in place 
over the decades that were too harsh, that there were black No, I don't agree really, that laws are too harsh. You think everyone was locked up for I don't pot agree that laws are years. too harsh. When you look at what's going on today, Judge, they're too weak. There, there are conservatives all over the country who have agreed that we need to make reforms to oh, how Oh, really? Uh, like Rudy Giuliani. All right, Rudy well, Giuliani, who was the toughest prosecutor this city has ever seen. Right, but who also talked about the fact that we had people unfairly. Right. Well, give me an idea. What do you want to change? Are we moving? Are you want, what I was want waiting to for you to say something, but if you don't have anything you want to change, I'll go to Ainsley. Ainsley, what? she brought up that people are locked up for pot. They yeah. always trot that out. I just don't see that because it's really true. happening. Basically, you basically have to murder someone to get arrested and stay behind bars in New York. I mean, we even saw the guy who's trying to protect his bodega, and we saw what happened to him. He has murder charges. And when everyone in the media and everyone in New York starts to push Alvin Bragg, then he changes his mind and he drops the charges. But that's what it took. How many out other people are out there that the media doesn't know about mm -hmm. that are, are getting charges with murder because they s defended their business? That guy worked every single day so hard to put food on the table his for his family. Some guy comes in and threatens him with a knife and he gets killed, but then everyone defends the victim. No one cares about the victims. What about the, the, the boy who, who died and was run over by the car because he was allegedly because he was a Republican? The mom and dad had to bury him, and they said, we will miss you every single day. And the guy is walking the street who does this. You know, this is what we hear time and time again. And one day it's going to be your child or our children. That's and that's okay. what I worry about. We live in New York City. I have to think about that when I go outside with my six-year-old. I live in your neighborhood. My friends see you walking... Uh, Walking your your uh, the stroller and they think you're cute. Um, <laughs> my friend Camille, she she always wants to talk to you, but she's a little nervous. So anyway, these are the things we worry about on our streets, you know, on the Upper East Side, um, and that bothers me. But you're right, we coddle these criminals. What do we expect when the Democrats say no bail? When they say defund, dismantle? When they say reimagine? When they say release these violent criminals? We are coddling them, and that teaches them that you can go into a store, a Wawa, do whatever you want. And you're never going to be pressed. Charges are never going to be pressed against you. Look in California, San Francisco. We saw all those beautiful stores that are robbed, and they walk out. As long as they don't take $1,000 worth, they're free. Greg, I believe that immigrant bodega owner had to flee the country. Did he really? Yeah, yeah. I think he left he for so the Dominican yes. Republic. You mean yeah, nobody's there on. right now? <laughs> oh, let's get out of here. <laughs> um, you know what the thing is? This is one of the consequences of a cancel culture in that there's a certain kind of censorship in which you can't actually talk about certain things. I don't agree that Democrats want more crime. And I don't think, you know, I, I, I honestly think that we have all the same goals, but we, our system, we don't agree on it. And it has a lot to do with, like, this kind of progressive mindset that, it, that punishment Injustice is somehow mean, right? So if you if you you could see right through the poster boy scam, but if you were to say something about it, you probably would have been called a racist. When you look at the the, the attack in, or the attack the uh, vandalism spree in Wawa, you can only say teens. You can't say anything else. A right? mob of teens. A mob of teens. You can't say anything else. And, and, they're, they're, and what that does is it kind, of mit, it kind of prevents you from actually going deeper talking about these problems. One, we have a terrible education system in which teachers' unions put the students last, right? That's a systemically racist system because only poor blacks in cities like Philly are left with that option. So you have lots of black kids in Wawa, right? Education. Two, BLM activists realized that the anti-police movement was a great business model, right? So they would like to keep that going, right? You, they made millions and millions of dollars, went to mansions, went to fraud, you name it, whatever. The last thing is what you, what you brought up is the devaluing of anything of value. I've noticed at Wawa, uh, carjackings that end up as joyrides, destructions at McDonald's. It's not even about taking things. It's about destroying things now because they have an idea uh, mob, the mob thinking has an idea that if you're not protecting something, then it probably isn't worth it anyway. So you're seeing vandalism at scale. It's the reverse of the, uh, of the what do you call it, the broken windows concept. Mm -hmm. I guess you could call it the open window concept. Yeah. Come on in, take whatever you want, because after the $900 decriminalization thing, nothing is worth anything. Why fight for it? I'll take that, but I don't even want it. But I can take it. Yeah. That's the that, when we when we as a society decide that things aren't of value anymore, then they aren't. It's all a trust between us that we decide what is important and what is of value. And when we stop protecting that, they 
don't care either. And that's what I think you're seeing. I think you're seeing a chaos brought upon by just a devaluing of, of culture. And, and Are you saying that they didn't want the tasty cakes that they stole? They just took them anyway? You always notice afterwards, yes. You, have, you notice afterwards, a lot of stuff isn't taken. It's just right. destroyed. Just, they just smashed the... They just smashed the stuff. Crimpets. Yeah, crimpets. And, and damn it, those are good. <laughs> those are good. Those are so I mean, good. I, I understand why they ransacked that aisle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.